In this video, we'll be looking at how cells are compartmentalized or divided up into separate compartments and how this allows cellular functions to be carried out most effectively. Be sure to watch our video on cell structure and function for details of organelle functions. This video covers organelles and specialization at the standard level and higher level. We start with defining which cell parts are classed as organelles and importantly, which are not. Then we'll move on to the advantages that compartmentalization brings to the cell. We then move on to higher level content and focus on mitochondria, chloroplasts, the nucleus, ribosomes, rough endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi and vesicles. So let's look at what constitutes an organelle and importantly, what doesn't. Parts of the cell that are considered organelles are the nucleus, vesicles, ribosomes, and the plasma membrane that encloses the whole cell. The more obvious, larger membrane-bound structures like the lysosome, vacuole, mitochondria, and chloroplasts are also classed as organelles. They are all enclosed, self-contained units that carry out a specific biochemical process. They are enclosed by their own plasma membrane or include a membrane which creates spaces within the organelle for distinct reactions to take place in isolation from other cellular reactions. Parts of the cell not considered organelles are the cell wall, the cytoskeleton, and the cytoplasm. These are specified in the IB Biology Guide. They are not classified as organelles because each of the organelles does not fulfill the definition completely. The cell wall provides structural support rather than performing a metabolic function. The cytoskeleton is a network of fibers that supports and moves the cell, but is not a separate compartment. And the cytoplasm is the general aqueous medium in which organelles are suspended rather than a specialized structure or working unit. In eukaryotes, the nucleus is separated from the cytoplasm by a membrane, unlike in prokaryotes, where the nuclear material is found in the cytoplasm. In eukaryotes, compartmentalization allows transcription and translation to occur in different locations. Because messenger RNA remains inside the nucleus after transcription, eukaryotic cells can modify it before it reaches the ribosomes, splicing out introns, adding methyl groups, and preparing a mature transcript. The nuclear pores then control the export of this mRNA to the cytoplasm for translation. This compartmentalization allows eukaryotes to fine-tune gene expression and timing, something not possible in prokaryotes, where transcription and translation occur simultaneously. Now, turning to compartmentalization in the cytoplasm itself, there are certain structures like lysosomes and vesicles that are suspended in the cytoplasm, yet are compartmentalized from the main body of the cytoplasm in order to concentrate certain chemical compounds. For example, a lysosome contains an acidic environment ideal for its function of hydrolyzing macromolecules, for example, in recycling unwanted proteins back into amino acids that can be reused elsewhere in protein synthesis. This acidic environment cannot exist in the wider cell cytoplasm as it would cause denaturation of many other enzymes whose optimum is more in the neutral to slightly alkaline range, typical of the pH of cell cytoplasm. Lysosomes also fuse with phagocytes in order to hydrolyze the cell contents, for example, a bacterium that is being destroyed as part of the non-specific immune system. Vesicles are designed to transport high concentrations of chemicals in bulk around the cell, or even to the cell surface membrane for secretion by exocytosis, as would be the case for a secretory cell producing a hormone, for example. The high required output of hormone would not be possible without compartmentalization. This would require a different mechanism, such as relying on facilitated diffusion out of the cell, which would not be rapid enough. Required for higher level, we're going to look at how the mitochondrion, which is one of the most sophisticated organelles in the cell, uses compartmentalization to get its job done. Mitochondria are the powerhouses of aerobic respiration. They release energy efficiently by keeping different reactions in separate spaces. Here's how it works. The outer membrane doesn't let glucose in, so glycolysis has to happen out in the cytoplasm. Its product, pyruvate, can move into the mitochondria via facilitated diffusion channels, creating our first level of separation. Inside, the inner membrane holds the main machinery for making ATP. The tiny gap between the inner and outer membranes allows protons to build up quickly, 
driving chemiosmosis and the phosphorylation of ADP. Without that narrow space, the whole process would be much slower because electrochemical gradients would not build up so quickly. Finally, the folds in the inner membrane, called cristae, provide surface area for the electron transport chain, while the fluid-filled matrix inside contains the enzymes and pH conditions needed for the Krebs cycle. The chloroplast is specially adapted to make photosynthesis efficient. The thylakoid membranes provide a large surface area packed with photosystems, electron carriers and ATP synthase to capture light energy and produce ATP and NADPH. The thylakoid spaces have small fluid volumes allowing rapid accumulation of protons for ATP production. Finally, the stroma is compartmentalized, containing the enzymes and substrates needed for the Calvin cycle, where carbon dioxide is fixed into carbohydrates. Note that the stroma is often confused with the cell cytoplasm. They are two completely separate areas of the cell. Together, these adaptations make the chloroplast a highly efficient site for converting light energy into chemical energy. Looking at the nuclear membrane more for higher level, we see that the nucleus, which is usually the largest cell organelle, is surrounded by a double membrane called the nuclear envelope, which separates the cell's genetic material from the cytoplasm. This compartmentalization protects DNA from chemical degradation and allows control of gene expression. The membrane contains a great number of nuclear pores which regulate the movement of molecules such as messenger RNA leaving the nucleus and proteins entering it. The nuclear membrane is continuous with the membrane making up endoplasmic reticulum, shown here, which allows rapid transport of proteins made in the ER into the nucleus. During mitosis and meiosis, the nuclear envelope breaks down into vesicles, allowing chromosomes to separate and access the cytoskeleton, such as the spindle fibers needed for chromosomal movement during the visible stages of mitosis and meiosis. The nuclear membrane later reforms to restore nuclear organization. So, ribosomes are tiny structures where proteins are made, and they come in two main types. Free ribosomes floating in the cytoplasm, and ribosomes attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum, or RER. Free ribosomes make proteins that stay inside the cell, things like enzyme used in reactions or proteins that help keep the cell's structure. Several free ribosomes can attach to a single strand of messenger RNA and be translating it simultaneously. This assembly is called a polysome. Ribosomes on the rough endoplasmic reticulum, though, make proteins that are sent elsewhere, these proteins move through the endomembrane system, often going to the Golgi apparatus for modification, and then they're either shipped out of the cell or delivered to places like lysosomes or the cell membrane. So the main difference isn't in how they make proteins, it's where those proteins are destined for. Free ribosomes make proteins for use inside the cell, while RER-bound ribosomes make proteins for transport and secretion. After proteins are made on ribosomes attached to the rough ER, they are sent to the Golgi apparatus. Now you can think of the Golgi as the cell's mail room. Inside the Golgi, proteins are modified, sorted and packaged. This can include adding sugars to form glycoproteins or tagging them for delivery to the right destination. Once the proteins are ready, the Golgi packages them into vesicles. Some vesicles carry proteins to the cell membrane for secretion, whilst others deliver them to places inside the cell, like lysosomes. So the Golgi apparatus plays a key role in processing and directing proteins to where they are needed, either inside or outside the cell. Vesicles are small, membrane-bound sacs that transport materials around the cell. Think of them as tiny delivery packets, carrying proteins and other molecules between organelles, for example, from the rough endoplasmic reticulum to the Golgi apparatus, and then from the Golgi to the cell membrane. Some vesicles fuse with the plasma membrane to release proteins outside the cell, and that's secretion. Others stay inside the cell to deliver materials to lysosomes or other compartments. Vesicles make sure everything in the cell gets to the right place at the right time, keeping transport and communication organized and efficient. Vesicles don't just move things, they're also carefully formed and directed, and that's where clathrin comes in. Clathrin is a protein that helps to shape vesicles during their formation. 
It forms a sort of coating on the membrane, creating a curved soccer ball-like structure that lets the membrane begin to fold inwards, a process called invagination. And a vesicle can then bud off from places like the Golgi apparatus or the plasma membrane. Once the vesicle pinches off, the clathrin coat is removed and the vesicle can travel to its target, carrying materials into, within or out of the cell. So clathrin's role is to organise and assist vesicle formation, making sure cellular transport happens smoothly and accurately. So in summary of the topic, think of eukaryotic cells as tiny factories, divided into compartments so different reactions can happen efficiently. The nucleus stores DNA and directs the cell's activities. Mitochondria make ATP, with their inner folds increasing surface area, while chloroplasts in plants capture light for photosynthesis. The rough ER makes and modifies proteins. The Golgi apparatus sorts and ships proteins to where they're needed. Lysosomes digest macromolecules. The plasma membrane controls what enters and leaves and helps with communication. Compartmentalization is a neat solution to many problems that could occur in living cells. It separates conflicting reactions, boosts efficiency, and lets organelles keep their own specialized environments. For those of you doing higher level, mitochondria and chloroplasts have double membranes, a legacy of their endosymbiotic past, and vesicles moving along the cytoskeleton keep everything organized inside the cell.